This is how you debug blueprints like a pro. We can monitor all values inside of our blueprints at all times, including complex data types such as arrays, structs or maps. And we can do so without having to spam print string nodes all over the place. We can also use breakpoints to stop the execution at certain points and step through the nodes one by one. And we're also able to see the execution flow while the game is running. Alternatively, we can also show the state of characters through text over their heads. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do all of these things, which is a lot simpler than you might think, and will make you 10 times faster at debugging your blueprints. Now, you're probably all familiar with the print string node and how you can use it for debugging. And when we want to know the value of a variable at a certain point in time, we can just plug it into the print string node, which will convert it to a string and print it to the screen. This can be useful for printing out a character's remaining health after taking damage, a character's current velocity, and countless other things to confirm if these values make sense and are updated correctly. And while using print string here is a valid method, you'll have to constantly add and delete them, which is annoying and time consuming. So let's now check the other method instead. All you have to do is go into play mode, open up whichever blueprint you want to check the values of, and then here on the top right, where you have this dropdown that says no debug object selected, pick the instance of the blueprint class that you want to monitor. Now, while the game is running, you can just hover over any place on your event graph or inside functions where a variable is being used and it will show you the current value that is constantly updating. This alone isn't all that impressive for simple data types, but with this method, you can even check the values of arrays or other more complex data types very easily. And with the print string node, this would be an absolute disaster since you'd have to loop over the array and print out all values, making it very hard to even understand what's going on. Another great example is this array here of my alive party members. Not only can I see the name of the members in the array, but all parameters that are available on the blueprint itself. This even goes as far as allowing me to look into actor components and data assets, and at any given time I can see stats like the current HP, mana, level and so on, and also attributes like attack power, crit chance, and all of the other things I have set up on the character. So no matter how complicated your data gets, you can get a full overview of everything like this. And using a print string to display all of this would be impossible. But of course you're not always making a turn-based game and don't necessarily have the time to check out these parameters while the game is running. And there's two ways to solve this problem. But before we get into that, a quick word about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. On Skillshare, you can join over 30,000 classes taught by creative pros and industry icons. These classes cover many different topics such as graphic design, 3D modeling, and there's even over 100 classes using Unreal Engine in various ways. The class I'm currently going through is creating a street environment in Unreal Engine 5 by Aniket Rawat which teaches how to create a Japanese street scene using Blender, Substance Painter and Unreal Engine 5. Now if you've been following my content, you might know that I've dabbled in 3D modeling with Blender before, but it never really stuck with me and I haven't touched it in a long time. But now that I've become quite comfortable with pixel art and can create my own characters, I have a lot of motivation to properly learn hard surface modeling and texturing to create environments for them and then put everything together in Unreal Engine 5. I'm very happy with this class and I'm pretty sure you'd also find a few classes you like. The first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare plus 20% off your first year. Get started today. Now let's get back to the two ways in which we can check out blueprint values in a non-turn based game. The first way of solving this is that you can pause the game at any given time by hitting the pause button on your keyboard. Now while the game is frozen, you have all the time in the world to look through the blueprints to check values. And you can also hit the eject button at the top to freely fly around the map and do some visual debugging as well if something doesn't look right. Now if you're working on a laptop or only have a half keyboard, you probably don't have a pause button. In that case, you can go into the editor preferences and search for toggle pause and bind it to an alternative button as well. And now you also have access to pausing and playing the game as you please. Another way to go about it is to use breakpoints. And these are great if you want to stop execution with very precise timing. Let's say I want to have a breakpoint right when the player takes damage. I can either right click and toggle breakpoint or just hit F9 on my keyboard to toggle it on and off. Now I don't even need to select the instance of the player and it will automatically kick in the moment I take damage. And now I have all the time in the world to look through this blueprint and check the current values for my variables. For example, I can see on the vitality component that I now have 10 health left because we still didn't apply the damage. And I can now step through the blueprint node by node to see what's happening. First, I'll use the straight arrow which says step to the next node to be executed in the current graph. And I can see one by one how we progress through the blueprint. 
Once we reach update health, which is called on the UI widget, you can see the current health was updated to 9.0 prior to this, having reflected the damage we took in the parents apply damage node. I can then also keep going until we reach the branch and this is also a great way for us to confirm which path we take with branching logic. And once I've completely stepped through, the game continues until I take damage again. Now if I want to for example see what exactly happens in the any damage of the parent or inside any of these functions, I can step into the function using this curved down arrow. And I can then use a combination of these commands to bury deeper into the nodes to see exactly what happens where. And this way I can find the exact moment where we go from 10 health to 9 health while being able to see the exact values of each node. Now this part does take a bit of getting used to, but I hope you understand just how amazingly powerful this is. And using this method actually saved me just last week when I had a weird bug in the JRPG where the victim's attack power was used instead of the instigator's attack power. Now another great debugging feature is that we can see the execution flow inside of blueprints during runtime. Again, when using print strings to see if something is executing properly, you'd place a whole bunch of them on different paths to see which one executes when, and while this is fine sometimes, it's often not the best way to go about it. Again, we can just start the game, open up any blueprint and select which instance of the class we want to monitor. And now while we're playing the game, we can see these orange lines with dots moving along them, showing us exactly what is being executed when. Now here it is very helpful if you have a multi-monitor setup, so you can either have the gameplay or the blueprint on another monitor, but if you just have one monitor, you'll have to cram things together somehow. Now this can be very helpful to diagnose issues with your game taking the wrong execution path somewhere or just generally not doing what it should. And these lines will give you an overview of which nodes are executed when. And again, in my JRPG, this is the perfect way to confirm the flow of battle and that everything is going as planned. As a little bonus, I'm gonna throw in another debugging method that is not a built-in feature, which is mostly useful for characters. And I've used it in my beat em up before to great effect. This method involves constantly outputting the state of the character as text, either through a text renderer or widget above the character or somewhere in the user interface. With characters, you'll often have different variables that block certain other actions, such as maybe a boolean with is attacking or is stunned, that will prevent you from walking or attacking again while that is true. And it's also likely that as the game becomes more complex, you'll have some enums in your character, like I have for the current attack type and for the current knockback state. Showing those values somewhere at all times will give you a good idea of what state a character is currently in to help you understand which actions they should be able to execute at what time and will allow you to test if things behave as they should. Using this method actually helped me figure out an issue with characters getting locked in the knocked down state and I do like it a lot for situations like this. You can just add a text render over the head of your character and on tick set the text it should display to always show the current state of any variable or the return value of a function. And that's the method I initially used. Later on I changed this to have a separate blueprint with all of the text renderers inside where I save a reference to the casted parent actor on begin play and attach it to the character as a child actor. This just made it a bit cleaner and easier to manage, but you could of course make it even more generic so it would work not just for characters but other things as well. I hope this video showed you some new methods of debugging that will help you throughout your game dev career. Just to be clear, I don't want to demonize the print string node and it has its time and place, but in many situations using one of the methods I just showed you will save you a lot of time and energy. So I want you to add all of these to your tool belt and use the appropriate one for each situation. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members.